definitely appreciate you guys coming out. I'm Kevin George, and I'm moderating the panel this evening. I'm the founder and uh, managing director of a company called ProGility Partners. We're a specialty consulting firm that helps technology-centric companies innovate, um, optimize their performance, and get their IT folks to really do what they're supposed to do uh, in support of the business strategy. So that's the, that's the short of it. Um, I've been a uh, TAG member for um, about a dozen years, and I've been on the Southeastern Software Association Board of Directors for the last couple of years as well. Um, and I just appreciate you guys coming out, and uh, I want to also thank Nokia Siemens Networks for hosting the event. It's a beautiful facility. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And, um, hopefully we'll uh, survive this thunderstorm and uh, not, have any, not have any issues with the uh, the wires that you guys are wearing. Um, <laughs> it's wireless. It's okay. Yeah. So a um, couple things I want to kind of walk through before we get started uh, is just to kind of talk about what we're going to talk about tonight, which is really about innovation. Um, and it's a pretty hot topic. It's been talked about for for a long time. Uh, there's books on it, there's consultants that do it, uh, there's a whole bunch of other things going on about it, but not a lot of that's happening here as far as these types of events to talk about it here in Atlanta. So I'm really happy that the uh, the board of directors decided that this was an okay event to, for us to do, and uh, I appreciate Satish's support for doing that and the rest of the board as well. Um, we have an impressive panel here that represents people from the uh, early stage companies, from rapid growth companies, and uh, from large scale companies. So the review points around innovation are gonna be interesting. I think you'll see some, some interesting differences as we have the conversation tonight about the differences of having innovation, running innovation, and driving innovation in small companies, which is really all about innovation. Uh, to large-scale companies that you know have so much momentum and so, so much inertia that they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that innovation becomes uh, a pretty big challenge sometimes. Um, so what uh, I'd like to do is have a very interactive session tonight, uh, not just between the, the, the uh, panelists but also uh, with the audience. Uh, there I do have one uh, particular housekeeping note is of interest, and I think we would have to get it out here. Um, for any of you whose last name begins with the letter W, we have uh, we have wired your tags uh, with a RFID device that will shock you if you have an outburst. So we know that W, <laughs> we know that the W names are really kind of wired that way. So we, we've taken care of that. <laughs> could, could, could we have a test of that? Just we do. We have a test just in case. Uh, we'll have to step outside. Yeah, so. yeah. Joe yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so trying to make it light. We try to have a little fun with this. Um, we'll, we'll also try to keep it to right about 45 minutes for this session, and hopefully by the time we finish, uh, we'll have some refreshments for afterwards. Um, our panel discussion is entitled. Taking advantage of the economic downturn by investing in innovation. It is a timely topic, um, even though many of the economic pundits are saying that the recession is over. I still think that there's an awful lot of issues that we have to overcome before we really get out of this, and the recovery is going to take us quite some time. So I think the downturn isn't just because the recession you know, happened. I think it's the, the recession and then kind of ramping back up to where things should be. We have a long way to go. Um, and in this last couple of years, what's really happened with innovation and, and the downturn was really kind of interesting. A lot of companies that are, you know, they did what they needed to do. They cut their costs, they cut their people, they stopped, in, they stopped investing in innovation. Um, but not everybody did that. And we're going we're to see some examples of that tonight as, we, uh, as Mike cues up his piece. But um, think about what's happened in the last couple of years in terms of social networking. Um, Two years ago, email was still the killer app. Well, killer app just, uh, just got superseded by social networking uh, just recently. So these new social networking uh, applications, if you will, that are out there, application platforms that are out there, have now superseded uh, email as a used application on the internet. Um, cloud computing. It's two years ago, did you guys really, beyond hearing about it, did you actually use it? Did it, how did it impact your business? Uh, there's been some interesting things happening there, and then also um, I am about ready to do something that Mike's going to talk about, which is lose my, uh, my landline at home and start using my cell phone for everything. So mobile devices are, are really becoming much more popular, and people are not going to continue to be tethered to their, their telco devices even at home, and I think that's going to expand to our, our office environments as well. 
So without further ado, I'd like to have each of the panelists kind of introduce themselves, get a little bit about their background, and then Mike, if, after, if you'd follow that, then just go ahead and uh, right into your thing, and we'll keep things moving. Great. Cool. Uh, thanks, everybody. My name is Mike Mullineau. I manage um, strategic marketing for uh, NSN North America within the applications and services function. Uh, Nokia Siemens Networks uh, is a mid-sized company with 30,000 employees worldwide, um, about 1,000 working out of uh, these facilities. And uh, our customers are the 1,000 or so wireline, wireless, and fiber optic uh, service providers um, that uh, deliver you services uh, every single day through your television, to your telephone, over the airwaves. And um, we're, we're glad to, to host this event. Thanks for letting us uh, be a part of your program. I'm Elaine O'Gorman, and uh, let's see, I think on the program it says that I am, uh, I, I, I am the, uh, the principal for growth leadership strategies, which I still am, but, uh, and was at the time where we first started this, but actually recently have uh, had developed a relationship with uh, Kevin's organization, so my, I am a newly minted innovation practice lead for Progility Partners. But I spent about the last 10 or 12 years working exclusively in high growth technology environments. Uh, I worked in, for an e-commerce uh, play uh, for an airline. We uh, did several joint ventures that are now very large companies you may have heard of uh, called Hotwire and Orbitz. Uh, I also worked on the American Airlines website, AA.com, which was run as a relatively independent entity, and we uh, ran that business from about 200 million to a billion while I was there. Um, I've also worked a little bit on the smaller side of the uh, equation. I worked uh, here in town for Silver Pop Systems for a number of years, uh, and that business grew by about a factor of 10 uh, during uh, uh, my time there. And so I've, I've been very fortunate to be a, a associated with companies uh, that have been through uh, a lot of the pains and joys that growth brings um, and that have, out of necessity and out of business practice, been very involved in integrating uh, innovation across the organization, uh, both as a mechanism to spur growth and as a mechanism for coping with growth. Uh, and so I'm very excited uh, to be here today. Uh, we, I work with a, a lot of clients uh, that are in that high growth phase and that are uh, um, working on ways to you know, keep innovation in their organization and to use innovation as a tool. Um, and I'm looking forward to talking more about it. Very good. My name is Jim Lester. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Product Management for a company in town named Ftrans. Ftrans is a venture capital backed company that has a platform that banks use to lend to small to medium sized businesses based on their receivables. Uh, we are a company that's grown about 6x over the last three years that I've joined, so I've certainly had the opportunity to participate in that growth curve. I started my career with EDS as a systems engineer and subsequent to that have spent most of my career in financial payments technology oriented businesses. Approximately half of that time has been with large Fortune 1000 plus type of companies and then Ftrans is my third startup. So one of the interesting things that I've had the ability to participate in is working at companies on innovations that have been successful and have grown within a large organization and some that haven't been able to escape the large organization <laughs> as opposed to also with small uh, companies as they attempt to innovate on the innovation curve. And they are uh, very, very different experiences and I look forward to sharing those with you. Very good. 